Hey everybody, Joseph Rothschild here, aka MBT, and it is time, ladies and gentlemen. September 1st looms large. Ban list season is upon us! So I figured I'd cash in on the hype and make myself a ban list prediction video. Now I want to start mine by saying I do not think we are going to get a substantive ban list on September 1st. Two reasons for that. Firstly, there's a pandemic going on. There simply haven't been enough paper events to draw any big conclusions. And secondly, Secret Slayers and decks that aren't necessarily in Secret Slayers but have cards in Secret Slayers or sets that came afterwards haven't had a chance to sell yet. From both a gameplay and an economic perspective, it doesn't really make sense for Konami to release a slaughter list. Now that said, I don't think that means that there will be no changes, nor do I think it's not an opportunity to clean off some of the chaff that currently plagues the ban list and give the players something to get excited about. So without further ado, I present a list that I think will be beneficial both to Konami and to the general player base. Firstly, let's talk about the cards, or in this case, card, that I think could be banned. The only card I expect to see put to zero on the upcoming ban list is Martial Metal Marcher. There's two reasons for this. Firstly, I think Halka Fibrax and Linkross are too young. Konami doesn't want to hit these cards so early into their lifespan. On the other hand, Martial Metal Marcher is a bit older than those two. And secondly, it doesn't kill any deck. Hitting a card like Halka Fibrax or Linkross might have unintended consequences. There's a lot of decks that kind of rely on the setup tools available through those options in order to have any semblance of play whatsoever. All Martial Metal Marcher really does is increase the ceiling on decks that are already good. This, ideally, will bring down the power level of existing decks to the point where other decks can interact with them, but also won't kill any decks outright. Shockingly, that's the only card I think should go up on the ban list. Now, time for the meat and potatoes of this video, what I think can come off. Let's start with the obvious. Makura the Destructor is a card that strikes fear into the heart of most Yugists. They remember chaining Legacy of Yadagarasu and Reckless Greed and Jar of Greeds together, but it's received errata in the OCG. When this card's sent to the graveyard, that turn you can only activate one trap from your hand. It's mostly fine over there, so it should be fine here as well once we get the reprint. After that is Cyber Jar. This exists on the list because of residual Empty Jar fears and FTKs, but the FTKs this enables aren't much stronger than the FTKs we currently have available. Uh, I think this could come off no problem, even though the effect admittedly is horrifying. Harpy's Feather Duster is definitely the most contentious pick on this chart. Uh, <laughs> Harpy's Feather Duster is a very strong card and would see play in either every main deck or every sideboard if it was legal, but I like the idea of having one Raigeki and one Harpy's Feather Duster available instead of like the weird split between the TCG and the OCG that currently exists. I could see a pretty good argument for keeping this on. After that is Time Seal. A uh, fun fact about Time Seal, this card is not good. People expect it's fantastic because one, it's banned, and two, it contains the forbidden phrase, skip the draw phase, but you can't activate it on your opponent's first draw phase after setting it because they're going to conduct it before you have a chance to respond. So the earliest you can skip a draw phase is turn four, and in modern Yu-Gi-Oh, who cares? Realistically, uh, with the ability of hand loop decks to take three to four cards out of your hand on the first turn anyway, one additional card off the top isn't necessarily going to matter much. In the extra, I think Bardish will come off. I don't necessarily think it's a good idea for it to come off, um, but with new Phantom Knights cards coming out and most of the payoffs for this card banned in their entirety, we can probably have him back. And Wind Up Carriers and Maity. I'll just level with you. I have no idea what any of the wind-up loops do. I did not play during that format. I just assume that Reddit's right. Dangerous, I know. Next to the cards that are currently limited, I think Morphing Jar could come to three. This is on for a couple of reasons. Uh, residual fears about uh, cycling, uh, Empty Jar, of course. Uh, but I think none of the things that it enables are more degenerate than the things that are currently playable. After that are the dangers. I think as a community, we just have to get over our fear of deep draw. Deep draw is not going to exist in some way, shape, or form. Uh, dangers or no dangers. <laughs> uh, the dangers see very little play regardless. Um, they're just extenders and decks that are no longer powerful. But if we become afraid of the world FTK once again, then I don't know. Let's just nut up and limit Saruya. After that is Dynamite Knight, the true Draco fighter, man. <laughs> Imagine being like, yeah, so you can play Numeron, Dragoon, Guru, but the real control deck we have to be afraid of is True Draco. Keep Dynamite Knight limited. 
In reality, I wouldn't have a problem with the remaining limited just out of hatred for true Draco players, but I think it could probably come off. After that are the Burning Abyss monsters, Seer and Graf. Uh, this might be a little contentious because Burning Abyss isn't necessarily weak, but I think bumping these up to three makes the style of Burning Abyss deck that was popular around Duelist Alliance, like a bunch of traps and then recursive Dante loops, more exciting. Right now, Burning Abyss decks are kind of like combo enablers for larger strategies. I'd like to see them return to that type of recursion that they were originally known for, and I think this would be a way to do it that wouldn't necessarily throw the format out of whack. Speaking of old consistency pieces, Pantheism of the Monarchs is still limited. I believe it's a 3 in the OCG. What people are afraid of with this card isn't the Domain Lock is too strong. <laughs> Imagine Domain Lock in a world where you could just carry around a Buster Dragon. But they're afraid that FDKs will be enabled by this, and that is certainly true. I mean, Distant Coder played one in the YugiTuber Grand Championship. That said, the FDKs this enables aren't much better than the FDKs we already have available. The consistency pieces for FDKs currently lie in the extra deck, so drawing extra cards from your main deck isn't too big of a problem. Next is Sekka's Light. I think the fear with Sekka's Light was that people were going to jam three cards in a 37 monster combo deck. We're doing that anyway. Like, Ad Emancipator already plays a 37 card uh, combo deck. I, I don't think that Sekka's Light is going to warp the math too much. Next is Mind Control. Now, Mind Control is undoubtedly a very strong card, uh, probably the most contentious after Feather Duster on this list. That said, I don't want to pay $200 for Triple Tactical Talents. That's, that's my only, that's the only thing that I can say in order to justify this coming back to three. Uh, Upstart Goblin. Um, remember when this was at three and everyone was like, you could play a 37 card deck, it's broken, and now people just play 45 card decks unironically because you have a more recursive, uh, in deck engine, um, a more toolbox ability if you're playing something like Dragon Link. I, I think the math on Upstart Goblin has kind of fallen by the wayside anyway. You don't see a lot of people playing 39 card decks plus one Upstart Goblin. I think if we put it to three, while you would see people jamming three and playing 37 card decks, it wouldn't be that big of a deal, and uh, those decks would be in contention with the larger toolbox-oriented style anyway. Gold Sark. This was put to one in fears of Thunder Dragon Colossus. Rest in peace. After that, we've got Emergency Teleport. Uh, granted, there are a lot of good psychic monsters you can be teleing out. Um, Ritual Beast, come back, please. But uh, Quick Launch is legal. You can just get dragons from the deck now. Why are we afraid of this effect? Of course, as you give combo more tools, you probably have to give control more tools as well, which is why I'm advocating for Dim Fizz and Macrocosmos to go to 3. Now, OCG already has one of these at 3, and it's not a big problem, but more importantly, I think the decks that are currently popular are not particularly equipped to deal with this style of effect. Introducing counterplay to those decks would be a good thing. In the extra, we've got ABC Dragon Buster. I, I don't really know why this was put to one. I think they were afraid that with Union Carrier, it would just be too accessible, too powerful, too recursive, and so we would have to limit it to a single copy. I think that experiment has largely been proven futile. Imagine playing ABC and not being named Calvin right now. Uh, Ignister Prominence, the true Draco Slayer. Am I missing something with this card? Did I miss the boat on this? Why is this limited? Is it really a... Uh, a remnant of Draco Pals that this is still on the list? Will having three copies change anything measurable? Yeah, bring him back. Additionally, uh, Diagusto Emerald was the center of a couple of FTKs that existed while World Chalice was meta, and Firewall Dragon was everywhere. Um, while you still can perform Diagusto Emerald loops, you can perform them now using a single copy, and no one does it. I don't think making those loops slightly more consistent is really going to have a huge impact. Zodiac Dryden is a weird pick for me. I think this archetype has just been an abject failure in, in uh, releasing Dryden and trying to get it to come back into metagame contention. Obviously, Tri Brigade increases the power of this archetype, but not by enough for it to be meta by any stretch of the imagination. Its power play is something that Numeron can accomplish in its sleep. I, I really do think Dryden could come all the way back to three, and this deck would still not be good. And uh, finally, totally awesome. Big boy. Bring him back. Obviously, the fear was that Bahamut Shark into Toad was going to be too powerful and, like, sharks were going to be tier zero or something. Clearly, that's not the case. Let us play with this card again, Konami. And finally, in my ongoing quest to eradicate the semi-limited list, I would like all semi-limited cards off. Tour Guide can easily come to three. Uh, it has done 
absolutely nothing at two. Destiny Hero Malicious? Maybe not. Um, while it's certainly not super broken in Hero, it is very strong in conjunction with the new Nemesis cards, and people have already figured out how to kind of link spam with this, even though it hasn't really been represented in any sort of uh, meta aspect. Um, for that reason, I would advocate a Malicious Limit or Ban. Uh, <laughs> or you could put them to three. I don't I don't really care. I just don't want there to be one card on the semi-list. And uh, Striker is a good deck. But uh, 2 to 3 Widow Anchor will not be the difference that pushes it from uh, tier 2.5 to tier 0. Uh, it, it will do more for my peace of mind to see no semi-limited list than it will <sighs> to lose to Ryan Yu. So that's that. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I think this list would not only allow Konami to keep selling product, but would also open up a ton of new exciting space for people interested in brewing. If you like what you see, please consider subscribing. And if you want to check me out on Twitch as well, I'd appreciate it. See you next time.